Hey everyone, I'm Maria. Welcome to my cancer journey. Uh, I have had probably one of the most difficult weeks that I've had um, throughout this thing so far, but you know, I can only keep taking things one step at a time and one day at a time. And so uh, I'll let you know what's been going on. And if you have any questions, just post them below. I'll do my best to answer them. And uh, yeah, um, this journey keeps on changing nearly on a daily basis. So today is Thursday and last week on Thursday, I received chemotherapy, which was carboplatin and taxol. It was my third course of chemo, but only my second one where I received the full dose of the taxol because of my allergic reaction. Um, by the next day, I felt full and I've been having the ascites drained from my abdomen on a weekly basis. So on Friday, I went in and um, the sonographer, because it's ultrasound guide, uh, guided, the sonographer said, you know, it's not safe for us to do that. You don't have enough ascites yet. So come back next week and then we'll be able to drain you. So I was very excited about that. I was like, okay, the chemo is starting to work. Um, the ascites is starting to dry up and this is great. But over the weekend, I started having really intense pain um, in my lower rib cage. It, it was sort of like there was fluid building up or something building up and it just wanted to explode. It was like it was pushing my ribs outwards, which caused a lot of pain. Um, and I was so uncomfortable. Um, I had to, every four hours, which is my breakthrough medication for my painkillers, every four hours I had to take my medication and I was typically in tears by that point. I couldn't sleep through the night because I'd wake up in so much pain. I'd, ha I'd wake up, take my medication, wait for it to kick in, and then go back to sleep. So on Monday, I had a new telephone conference with my doctor, and she was concerned that while the ascites seemed to be less when I went for my parents' and thesis on Friday, that she was concerned about the feelings that I was having as far as the rib cage, um, the pain, and oh yeah, it was also pretty difficult to breathe. So if I walked more than 12 feet, I was breathing heavily and just it, it was just a very difficult time. So she arranged for a CAT scan, um, an emergency CAT scan, because there was concern about, hey, what the heck is going on? So on Tuesday, I went in for an emergency CAT scan and, and I couldn't even finish the entire drink. It was, I want to say about 32 ounces of fluid. And I'm thinking to myself, it takes everything I have to even get eight ounces of fluid in me at a time, let alone 32 ounces. Um, but apparently what I was able to drink was sufficient and they were able to administer contrast through my port. So um, again, one less IV, I'm happy about that. So just talked to the doctor um, today about the results of the CAT scan. And so while in the ascites in my abdomen has been lessening, there's fluid that's building up in my chest area, um, not in my lungs, but I think by the chest wall uh, in my lungs. And so the hope is that eventually that'll dry up, but it is a concern for her that um, that it's now going into my lung area. And so that's, that's a concern. Um, they also compared this most recent CAT scan against the CAT scan that I had in August. And a couple things that they look for is, geez, have the tumors been reduced? Is, you know, there any evidence of new disease? You know, what's going on here? And um, 
let's just say the results weren't good. But, you know, so um, all my tumors have increased in size. So that means that the chemotherapy, sorry, the chemotherapy that I have been having is not doing its job because it's not even keeping it steady. It's it, They're increasing in size. And there were a couple new lesions that the CAT scan um, picked up that weren't there two months ago. So what that tells her is that we need to address it now. So I spoke with her this morning, an early appointment, um, and so they're going to change my chemotherapy regimen. Uh, they'll take away the Taxol, which, I mean, I had a difficult time dealing with anyway, so I, I'm hoping for less side effects. I'll still have the Carboplatin once every 21 days, but um, I'm going to have a new chemotherapy drug, which will be administered on day one and eight of that 21-day schedule. So on week one, I'll have carboplatin and the um, gamma mentine. I, I'll put it in the um, description below once I find the spelling and I'm going to have to ask someone to keep pronouncing it because I know I'm totally butchering the um, the name. But so on week one, I'll have those two medications. On week two, I'll only have this new medication, this new chemotherapy that she's prescribing. And week three is when um, I'm going to not have chemo. So that would probably be, you know, when I feel my best. And so... That's going to start in, in my next scheduled chemotherapy. I asked if it could start sooner, but apparently because I had just had chemotherapy last week, my body needs time to recover from the stress that these drugs has, they have put on it. So, um, so I, I am looking forward I'm hopeful that um, this is going to take care of it. They're keeping a close eye on it. So probably after two courses, there'll be another CAT scan to see and whether or not my um, and tumors are responding favorably to it. Um, we haven't talked too much as far as next steps. One of the things we did discuss was surgery because I asked whether or not this the intent was that I still have surgery. And she's going to speak with my um, gynecological surgical oncologist um, to just confirm that he would not want to do surgery for so long as I have the ascites. Because um, when I go in for surgery, the uh, incision is going to be from my be uh, from my breastbone all the way down to my pu uh, pubic bone, and so if there's a fluid accumulation, that can really put a lot of stress on the incision, cause a lot of issues, and we don't want that. We want an optimal surgery. Um, we want to kill as much cancer as possible, uh, but. Again, my team is doing everything possible to get me to, you know, cancer free, get me to survive this thing. I have every confidence in, you know, all their actions that they're taking um, for me. But um, it, it was certainly not the news that I had hoped. I, I had convinced myself that the tumors were shrinking because one of the things when I was first diagnosed that I had issues with is that, and sorry if it's TMI, but like every time that I went to the bathroom, there was a lot of pressure um, in my lower abdominal area. And there were times when I'd go to the bathroom and I'd be crying. And, you know, whether it was number one or number two, it, it's just that pressure and pain was so intense. And after a period of time, that started alleviating. And so 
I figured, well, of course the tumors were getting smaller because, you know, I'm no longer having that pressure pain or it wasn't as intense or as often as it was previously. Um, but I was wrong. However, some good news today, I did have um, a paracentesis done. So fluid was removed from my abdomen. My breathing is easier. And I assume that, you know, once you get a lot of fluid removed, my lungs were able to decompress. And so it was a lot easier to take a deep breath um, without having that awful pain or feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm really short of breath. This is pretty scary. So got paracentesis done today, got some fluid out today, easier breathing because of that um, today. So I'm very excited about that. One other thing is um, the amount of fluid that they removed today is still less than the last time. So the last three times, the amount of fluid that they've been removing has incrementally decreased. So three paracentesis ago, I believe it was 5.6 liters. Then before today, it was 4.75 liters. And today they removed 3.75 liters. So a lot of fluid, but the amounts are decreasing. So it is my hope and my optimism that um, my fluid will continue to dry up. This new chemotherapy will completely dry it up so I won't have to do the paracentesis anymore so that any of the um, fluid that's accumulating around my lungs dissipates and um, I get back on track and hopefully are, am in a position where the surgery can be scheduled and, um, you know, get that cancer out of me and, and be able to receive some of these cutting edge treatments um, that Dana-Farber is known for and um, put me in the best position to win. So sorry, I don't have a great update um, from the last time. I, I was so positive. I, I am still thinking positively. Um, but, you know, I do have my moments. Clearly, you know, there's sometimes when I talk about things, it's very difficult for me to talk about without crying. Um, but I, I can't think that I'm not going to do anything but survive this thing. And um, again, I, I thank every one of you for your support of me. You, you just don't know how much it means when, you know, I see your comments and your encouraging words and I hear some of your stories or your relatives' stories. It's it just makes me feel like I'm not alone and hey, I got this. I can do this. You know, it's it's not going to be easy. I know that, but I can do this and you know, I'm going to survive. <laughs>